Somebody son go find me one day One day I don't know do wait, don't stay too far away hey. Somebody, somebody Somebody son go find me one day I love that so much <laughs> Hi, my villagers. Hey, if you're a villager and you're subscribed, shout out to you. If you're not subscribed and you're new here, let me just explain what this is about. Eh? Today we have a fire topic, but let me explain this. Okay, so this is a quote unquote digital village where we talk about African village matters. You know, like when you're in the village and you come together and you're like okay let's put together let's try and resolve this this has been bothering me i don't know this i don't know that okay i know we're in the cities i know life is happening but you know what we can always evolve with times okay now that is out of the way let me introduce our topic of the day africans what happens after the traditional wedding hey <laughs> I think this is a very timely topic, especially because December there are so many traditional, there's so many weddings, and I think there is like a good amount of like there's a trend or like I don't want to call it a trend. I think it's like a reckoning. It's like a reckoning, especially among the young people, that we need to get closer to our culture, and so it has sort of like made a lot of people aware that we have so much beauty and so many of us want to tap into that at least that's what i believe okay so there is a huge movement especially around like uh, african weddings um and uh i just got a few pictures here so it, this is just amazing amazing traditional wedding weddings you can see there's a little bit of modernization you know in the way people are dressing but you can still see that it taps at the root at the at the core of the matter which is the culture itself and it's it's on point uh, so these are some instagram photos it represents mainly traditional weddings from the south uh and then of course i had to come through you know with my kenyan roots you can see on the right hand side that's the miji kanda bay yours truly miji kanda <laughs> what's up warning anywho and then uh you can see on the left this is a kikuyu bride uh preparing for her traditional wedding kikuyu is one of the biggest tribes in kenya um uh and i i have a kikuyu friend she was telling me they call it the ugly bra these days but i don't think it's ugly well it's a nice way to laugh about it but i don't think it's ugly i think it's pretty um and she looks beautiful um and then obviously our sisters and brothers from the west you know ghanaian wedding nigerian with nigerian ghanaian weddings are huge when they hit the internet <laughs> people be coming with money hey somebody send a family one day hey, one day <laughs> i'm having so much fun with this video <laughs> um and then you can see here they're just exquisite brides Ooh, this this was this the left picture that one stole my heart i'm going to be honest uh, if you know this lady, please go and give her a shout out and show some love on Instagram because you can see the Instagram details of everybody. So be sure to support people. Be sure to support your fellow Africans. Uh, people are doing great work just showcasing culture. It is important. Um, but anyway, let's jump into the topic. And what I want to talk about is what inspires you today to invest in these lavish, you know, traditional weddings. Uh, and if you have, if you're one of the people who is maybe getting married and you're seeing this video or you're thinking about, you know, having a wedding, are you going to do a traditional wedding? Are you not going to do a traditional wedding? If you're going to do a traditional wedding, what is inspiring you uh, to do these especially huge, lavish weddings? Is it because you truly want to honor your culture? 
uh, to honor the peop the villagers. Because you know, African weddings are not really centered on you as a person. At least that's my experience. African weddings are really centered on the people and it's more of a celebration of you and the people where you come from what you represent your heritage your culture your legacy your lineage your clan hey i could go on <laughs> and so i always wonder is it because it's a momentous moment and you know that's where you want to spend but when, or is it that do you usually see it as an investment on culture, you know? And then the other thing that I also wanted to, to ask is honoring the traditions beyond the wedding day and investing in the things that matter most. Is it something that also crosses our minds as Africans? Is it something that crosses our, our, our planning? Are we intentional, especially when in that process where you're talking to the elders, in that process where you're talking to, uh, to your aunties, your uncles, and they're teaching you life lessons? At least that's how we do it back in the, in the, um, in the Mijikenda communities, community in the coast. So the reason why we go through like a traditional wedding, it is a moment for you, for your aunties to teach you about womanhood. So let me give you an example. So a week before the wedding, um, there is something we call kutawa. Kutawa means that you you stay in a house of your aunties, any of your aunties. You don't stay home home, yeah. And so the idea behind this is that in that one week, your aunties will come. They take turns. Uh, um, and they come there and they impart wisdom about you. How do you live with a man? You know, what are some of the things that you should take into account, especially when you're trying to build a home? What are some of the things that you can uh, deal with, especially in terms of, you know, fertility issues because, you know, you're preparing your your body to, to, to carry a child, uh, of course, this is something that is usually expected. Many of us, you know, we celebrate uh, the idea of building a family with kids. Um, it is not a question or a matter of if I want kids. It is more like this is part of who we are as a culture, you know, that we have build big families you know uh, I know times have changed there is a whole huge debate to be had about that but the truth of the matter is we celebrate life fully and whether you're rich whether you're poor family is is viewed as wealth um, because you can you cannot have money but you can have someone to smile with you can you might not have uh, you might have all the resources and wealth and money that you want, but you're miserable because you don't have someone to count on, you don't have someone to walk with you. And so that is how we view families, like the idea of starting a family as, you know, wealth, as we celebrate it. There's so much celebration around like creating life. And, and so this moment is usually a moment where like women who've gone through different journeys uh, within your community will come and talk to you about womanhood. Uh, if you're experiencing fertility issues, what are some of the uh, traditional things or medicine that you can do? For instance, uh, for us, there's something, uh, we do like a clove tea, it's a clove, ginger, you know, and cardamom and cinnamon, uh, you boil it together and you can drink that for a certain period of time. It really helps your body to prepare you as a woman. Uh, if you get pregnant, how should you take care of yourself in the first trimester? What are some of the things that you can anticipate? What are some of the things that can be challenging? What goes into taking care of taking care of the baby what are the journeys of taking care of the, of the baby you know as a first time mother what are some of the child communication challenges aunties have experienced uh in their marriages you know how do you make sure you create a balance so you know these are things that you know nowadays 
especially Christians, would go into a premarital counseling. But premarital counseling, especially speaking as a Christian, it's a good thing. But it is not like having an auntie that you connect with in that wedding day. And after that wedding day, you know that that auntie is still there. Their family deeply ingrained in culture and so much wisdom that you can go to them anytime. And so, you know, as I talk about this part where honor, how do we honor the tradition, the, the traditions beyond the wedding day? Is it something that we are really keen on investing? Because if you invest a huge sum, you know, in your wedding, but you're not keen on investing on the traditions, then what are we really doing? Is I'm curious, especially for people who are millennials, Gen Zs, people who are going to be getting married, you know, have gotten married uh, very soon. You know, are you intentional about investing in the things that actually matter beyond the, wed the, the wedding? And, you know, how, do you care to ask those deep questions? Do you care to uphold those traditions? You know, and you know, in in terms of preparation, it is also preparation in, in in the terms of preparing the next generation to honor and carry forward and help rebuild traditions. What do I mean by this? When you get kids. Are you also intentional about helping them go through this journey, teaching them your native language, teaching them, you know, the ways uh, of your people? Generations and generations have sustained these cultures, you know, and so it, it seems like the burden now is being passed over to you. So the question is, are you ready to take the mantle? Are you ready to become the village elder that like these village elders have been there for you? Do you think like when you are raising the next generation, you're also intentional about doing this? You know, um, I have always been fascinated by the by 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 our 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 weddings, our African weddings. Uh I feel like that is this the weddings have been a crucial point to help connect you know the modern day um, uh, African to the older African and I feel like it's it's really important for us to tap into that moment even much more <sighs> anyway these are just my thoughts i have some i have today i have more questions than answers for sure but i'm really curious as, as to what you guys really think um uh and what your experiences has uh, experience has been uh especially if you've gone through like the traditional wedding and all that did it change you as a person uh how do you feel like uh, you're living your life now to honor those traditions that you invested so heavily on that very wedding day. So anyway, guys, let me know. Uh, please be sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Also be sure to join the community. I think the most important thing is for us to be able to talk about these things, uh, for us to be able to uh, engage with each other, challenge each other. And so it will be lovely to get your comments. It will be lovely to interact with you and uh, to get to know what you guys think. Until next time. Cheers.